our last presenter of the uh, of the day, which is Metals Tech Limited. Uh, Metals Tech has an ASX code of MTC. Uh, Metals Tech also has a market cap of approximately 50 million. Uh, the company is focused on developing the world-class Sturek gold mine in Slovakia and the development of the Canadian-based Savol's lithium project in the emerging James Bay Lithium Province in Canada. Presenting today is the company's founding director, Gino Downer. Gino, welcome and please take it away. Thank you so much, Manny, for, for allowing me to present uh, this afternoon. So as you've uh, rightly pointed out, Metals Tech is advancing its Sturek Gold project, which is located in Slovakia, which is in Eastern Europe. Uh, can I forward a couple of slides, please? Thank you. So as you can see, uh, so we're on what's called the Western Tethys Gold Belt in uh, in Eastern Europe. So for those that aren't familiar with Slovakia um, and where the project is actually located, so the, the project did, and the mine actually, um, it's built in and around um, an established uh, town, but the town itself was uh, constructed on the basis of the mining operation. So Sturek has been a producer since the really the Roman era. 1.5 million ounces of gold was historically produced from a combination of underground and open cut uh, mining operations. And so it's in an area which is very familiar to the community as far as a mining district is concerned. So we're not facing any significant uh, community uh, concerns with respect to competition for land use or competition from a tourism perspective. These areas are very well known uh, for its mineral endowment. Uh, Sturek, um, in particular, uh, located around what the town is called Kremnica. Um, and that mining area is, uh, as I mentioned before, it's got a very strong, steeped history uh, of gold production. Uh, Slovakia, in its own right, is also very well known for producing not just gold, but also zinc, nickel, lead and copper, as well as a variety of industrial minerals. So Sturek as a, sorry, Slovakia story, sorry, as a as an area, as a country, um, actually has very uh, diverse mining background as well. Now, when Metals Tech acquired the Sturek Gold project, um, we bought the project for 750,000 Australian dollars in cash. No shares were issued, uh, nothing, no other payments uh, contingent or uh, performance consideration payable. That was in, in August of 2019. When we bought the project, the uh, asset had uh, just over 1.1 million ounces under a Jork 2004 uh, measured indicated in third resource. And it was completed by the likes of Snowden um, and SRK had actually completed um, an historic uh, pre-feasibility study, which demonstrated quite a significant economic robustness of the project. And it was based on a full scale uh, open cut mining operation. Fast forward to today. Um, the project now hosts 2.7 million ounces under a Jaw 2012 measured indicated in third resource and just over 22 million ounces of silver as well. So it's a significant gold silver deposit. It is what we call a very large uh, epithermal vein style of, of gold uh, uh, mineralization. Some of the uh, historic and, and in fact, it's the, the drilling that Metals Tech has done. Some of the grade intersections are, for example, 90 metres at four grams per tonne. We've got intersections running in excess of 100 metres at five grams a tonne, um, as well as individual intersections uh, by the metre of more than 500 grams a tonne. So Bonanza grade gold deposit uh, is the way that we describe it, but it's very shallow, uh, very high grade. Now, uh, Next slide, please. This is just some of the statistics or some of the data on the company um, as far as what number of shares we have on issue. So 188 million shares on issue, giving us a market cap of just over $48 million. Um, on an EV, uh, mark, sorry, market cap sorry, per jork basis, it's around $18 an ounce. Uh, this is in Australian. So if you look at a comparison to peer companies uh, holding gold deposits of a similar nature, um, it is a very clear identification that the uh, Metals Tech project, uh, so Metals Tech as a company, and the Stuart project is significantly undervalued. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. This is a scoping study that we produced 
uh, in late 2023. Um, and as I mentioned before, so when we bought the projects, um, SRK had completed a, an open cut pre-feasibility study. Now we took a fresh look at the mining uh, operation and, and a very deep thorough review of the mining methods as well. We also took a very strong uh, view in terms of how we we're gonna be able to move the project forward, listening to community concerns, uh, particularly on the back of uh, how um, like natural forests and so forth had, had sort of naturally grown around the project area over the last 15, 20 years while mining has ceased. And we made a, a decision at that point in time to suggest to our engineers and our mining engineers that the only way that Sturet can be developed is on a large bulk tonnage underground mining operation. So what this led to is a number of options analysis were, were conducted, um, but ultimately where we settled was, as I said, large scale, two declines running in parallel with each other having a plant throughput of 2.3 million tonnes per annum with roughly 1.1 million ounces of gold uh, equivalent being produced over the life of mine. Now, what that means for us is that we produce uh, on an average annual basis of just over 100,000 ounces of gold equivalent. But what it means as well as from an environment and an infrastructure perspective is that the infrastructure can be hidden in and amongst the valley. We are looking at adopting what's called a dry stack tailings and the company can also look at pumping through a paste plant a lot of the waste material back into the underground, and then we can deal with as any potential acerop drainage as a result of that as well, because this product, the waste material, I should say, is actually solidified underground again, so there's no leakage potential. Now, one of the things that we're also looked at, in, and it was a direct result of Slovakia banning the, banning, sorry, the use of cyanide in 2012, we looked at alternative lixivians, uh, as well as ammonia thiosulfate as an alternative, but what we deemed appropriate for bringing the project into production in the nearest term possible is to actually look at just producing a very higher value gold and silver concentrate and shipping that gold silver concentrate cross border to a smelter where uh, production of a dore or a gold silver bar could be undertaken uh, outside of country. Now, that's not something that, new, that is new for Slovakia. The Rosalia mine, which is about 30 kilometers due north of Sturek, is also doing the same thing. They're very successful. They're, their plant is much smaller, but in terms of how they're treating with the waste, how they're looking at uh, maximizing production and what they're actually selling cross-border is very similar to what we would be looking to undertake at Sturek as well. It's a very profitable mining operation, $927 US an ounce, um, all in sustaining costs, um, very low pre-production capital, about $75 million US, uh, which generates an IRR of north of 116%. So very significant mining opportunity. Uh, the gold price at the moment at, is trading at around $2,300 US an ounce. Our scoping study was based on $1,850 US an ounce. So it uh, puts things into perspective in terms of the robustness of the economics and the upside that is potentially still sitting within the project as well. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, Sturek hosts 2.7 million ounces of gold in a Jork 2012 measured indicated deferred resource, but we have an additional 2.2 to 5.1 million ounces, which sits in, a, in a, an exploration target outside and above the resource. So what that means is that there's potentially uh, anywhere between five and eight million ounces of gold uh, within Sturek. This is the benefit of having the, what they call a large scale epithermal uh, gold project. These things, as you get closer to the funnel, um, you get increases in grade, but they tend to be very well mineralized along the entirety of the strike of the project and, and of the resource both stratigraphically um, and, and a long strike on its official, um, from its official point of view. Very attractive metallurgical uh, characteristics, very low um, deleterious elements such as your arsenics. It's a very low arsenic below uh, penalty thresholds, um, very high recovery rates up to 93% on the gold and the silver. Um, and also responds very well to simple gravity and, and flotation separation. So there's no uh, trickies, there's no need for acids to be brought in to leach any of the gold. 
Um, there's, there's a very low potential of any drainage of acid from the waste rock, um, owing to the fact that it's very low in arsenic. Uh, this Western Tethys Gold Belt, as you can see from the map, it's not a, a an unknown gold district. It's very well mineralized all the way from Slovakia in the north all the way down to Greece in the south. And you've got the likes of Dundee Precious Metals, El Dorado Gold, and Zijin Mining. So very significant major mining companies uh, producing and, and operating their mining projects in this Western, Western Tethys Belt. Next slide, please. So, as I mentioned earlier, um, the project has got still significant exploration and production upside. Um, what we believe uh, is, is owing to Sturek is that outside of the main Sturek resource, there are a number of regional prospects that also add significantly to the uh, resources and also significantly to the additional resources that can be delineated. There's a bit of a, a, um, a grade uh, cutoff um, measurement that you can see in terms of where the scalability is as well, but at a 0.3 grade cutoff, the average grade of the resource is 1.2 grams a tonne gold and over 8 grams a tonne in the silver. Next slide, please. So as I indicated earlier, so very uh, strong uh, project from a robustness perspective on, on its economics uh, generated from the scoping study but also significantly in scalable project owing to two operating declines. There is already a significant amount of existing underground infrastructure in place as well, which is helping to fast track the uh, production startup. As I indicated before, it's a very simple metallurgical project as well, just doing gravity flotation separation, no uh, tricky chemical uh, digests uh, having to be used um, in the processing uh, route, and we've got more than 75% of the resource sits in the measured and indicated category. So certainly a lot of confidence uh, also exists around the actual resource itself. Next slide, please. So recently we announced uh, an offer that uh, we received from a Canadian uh, mining fund called Transmetal Fund um, to acquire the Sturet Gold Mine. Um, our market cap, just for, for clarity, is uh, $48 million Australian, as at today. Um, and the upfront cash consideration payable, if we do pursue the Transmetal Fund e offer, sorry, is $56 million US. We've recently just announced the extension to our underground mining licence, which is good for another 10 years now. Um, and in addition to the upfront $56 million US cash payment, there's the uh, opportunity to either take a 2% overriding or a gross royalty on, on project revenue um, or convert that into a $25 million cash payment on commercial production. So the offer in its entirety values the project at $120 million Australian. Um, and we still believe that that significantly undervalues the project. But at the same time, the company has uh, engaged um, a very well-known uh, strategic um, partner to run a process on behalf of the company um, and what's falling out of that is not only the Transmetal Fund but we've also just over the last two weeks hosted three other major mining companies to site um, taken there by SRK and other large gold standard mining um, consultants and we've also as a company have got Chifeng Gold who is probably the third or the second largest Chinese gold producer uh, which owns roughly 9% of the register of metals tech as well. So significant competitive tension. Um, this is one of the main takeaways for the project is that we've got a lot of interest being shown owing to the significance of the project, owing to its strategic location, that Western Teddy's Gold Belt. Um, we've got a lot of uh, competitive tension coming to the table from the strategic project that, that is being run, not just from an acquisition perspective of the project, but also potentially bringing in strategic um, partners from a uh, joint venturing uh, point of view as well. And I think, Manny, that puts me out of time, but at a suitable junction, um, thank you very much for the opportunity. Okay, Gino. Um, yeah, look, it, it, it sounds interesting, and you've obviously got a lot going on at the moment in terms of the levels of interest um, over the, uh, the Turek Gold Project. 
Um, let me just ask you, can you, you touched on how it compares very briefly to perhaps some of the neighbouring um, uh, gold uh, developments. Can you just remind us who those key neighbours are, how your project compares to theirs um, in terms of, you know, a, a geology, uh, you know, size, grade? How does that look? Yeah, sure. So in the first instance, so some of those partners are, so Zijin Mining, so Chinese, I think they are the largest Chinese gold miner. Uh, El Dorado Gold, who is a Canadian multi-project uh, uh, gold miner as well. And you've also got Dundee Precious Metals, another Canadian group, again, a uh, multidisciplinary uh, mining company. So their projects are very similar to Sturek in terms of the fact that they are also large-scale epithermal deposits. Now, some of those are gold and copper, uh, which is different, of course, to, to Sturek, which is which is a gold-silver. But in its in their own right, they still house up to 5 million ounces of gold. So your typical uh, standard deposit in this Western Tethys gold belt is that 5 to 7 million ounce um, project. Now, Sturek sits at just under 3 million ounces today with 22 million ounces of silver. And it just demonstrates, again, because of the exploration target, it demonstrates that it also falls into that same category of being able to boast uh, between five and seven million ounces of, of gold equivalent as well. Now, from a grade perspective, again, on the gold side of things, they do run very similar. Um, what we've been able to demonstrate uh, at Sturek, in particular through the scoping study and how we've taken a revised view, and a lot of it had to do with how we were listening to the community and what their concerns were around um, destabilisation of the existing environment and how we could actually push the project forward from an underground-only perspective. And what it's demonstrated is that we can produce 100,000 ounces of gold per, per annum, similar to what you're going to be getting from an open cut mining operation. And that's with the use of two declines, but with what we call bulk tonnage open stoke mining. So very large underground mining equipment going in, pulling out some significant uh, amounts of, of, of ore, bringing it to site, to, to sorry, to the ROM pad, and it goes through a 2.3 million tonne per annum uh, gold plant. Um, again, very simple metallurgy. It's just gravity and flotation. So, again, no acids, no acid being consumed on site whatsoever. Okay. And um, let's just move on to uh, the fairly big news you've had recently, which is that Transmetal Fund out of Canada has, has, uh, it, you know, has put a bid in front of you. You've obviously made it pretty clear in the Prezo that you are exploring, you know, all you know all avenues. I, you you know, there is price tension there. You, you know, you're looking at uh, you're looking at that at the moment. The likely outcome of all of this is it, it, it? You know, is the board thinking more along the lines of they'll get a partner in at the project level, um, which will obviously assist in funding and 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 perhaps some technical, uh, you know, sort of uh, some technical uh, advantages coming through from a from a large partner like that. Or is it very much a case the board is open to, um, you know, accepting a bid for 100% of Sturic? Yeah, I mean, the great question there. Um, and I just want to draw relevance back to the purchase price. So as, as again, we paid 750000 Aussie dollars for it in cash, nothing else. Now, the offer from Transmetal, if you excuse the $25 million lump sum US on conversion of that royalty, there's $56 million US cash payment. So it's a significant uplift in terms of what we've paid and what we've spent on exploration. Now, Transmetal Fund have been to site, but so too have four other parties. We've also just coordinated a site visit for Chifeng, uh, as well as um, another two other Chinese groups to go along with them separately, of course. And we've just had some significant debriefs last night with some of those parties that have returned from site. So there is a lot of interest being shown some of the interest being shown, as you said, there is strategic from the perspective of we can help you to take this thing into production. We can help you to finalise a community engagement and ensure that permits are given in a timely fashion. But there are also groups that are showing strong interest, uh, groups that have already got an established position on that Western Tethys belt that are angling towards, hey, this could make a great addition to our existing portfolio would you consider a straight out acquisition? And the these are sort of metrics that we're talking. So 
We are very open to what's taking place before us, but we're also working very diligently with our partners, uh, with our strategic advisors in particular as well, um, knowing, uh, of course, that from the company's perspective, um, we have to obviously do what's best for our shareholders. Um, and in terms of, of, of giving an enhanced return to shareholders, uh, that might actually come in the form of, of a direct sale. But it remains sort of at the moment um, just making sure that we accurately cover off on all the offers that have been presented to the company at the moment. Okay. I mean, I know this is a tough question to answer because it's uh, how long is a piece of string type question, but do you have a sense for when a decision is likely to be made? Uh, on yeah. The, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I think that in terms of what's been presented to the company most recently and not just through the TMF offer, but also through other um, indicative uh, term sheets that have been presented as well. I do think that a decision can be, will be made uh, in a very sort of near term. And I think that will give a lot of clarity to our investor base as well. So from our perspective, um, it's going to ensure that, of course, uh, Sturek continues with its life, but whether it's Metals Tech um, pursuing it in its own right or Metals Tech pursuing it, with a partner, that's where we're, we're currently working um, on, on how that's presented and, and what works best for our shareholder base as well. Gino, um, thank you for your time today. That's a pretty interesting uh, prospect you've got there. So a bit of work for you guys and for you and the board to uh, to do, I gather, over the next few months to to figure out the right direction. But um, yeah, um, it, sounds, uh, it sounds like you've got a great project in the making there. Um, so thank you for your time today and um, and uh, have a great weekend. Fantastic. Thank you, Manny, and, and likewise to yourself.